was last in my class. Your theories are the worst kind of popular tripe. Your methods are sloppy and your conclusions are highly questionable. <laughs> Competent here, and we are back for another delightful session. Let's play Might and Magic 3. We're going into the hole here. Alright, so let's do it. Let's go ahead and uh, check to see if we can get the note. Can't get to the next level. We're going in and we're ready to go into the cavern. Down we go into the darkness. Alright, so we need to light up our torch and get blazing so we can see what in God's name is happening here. Alright, so I uh, F1, push I to get my inventory happening, and get the torch. We can see its beautiful brown cavern. Alright, so... Um, we've got these blessings here, and we need to walk through the guillotines. I believe that Harry Hand's blessings will mitigate all the damage that he takes, yep. Uh, and everyone else, because they're at plus three, is taking two from the five that these things do. We're gonna strafe into this, um, and then we're gonna step up. We've got a little reprieve. Let's check how everyone's doing. Everyone is fine. Um, and ahead is the blue man and we're gonna step one time through another guillotine into the blue man to see what we can do now again we're at plus three blessings and here we go what be the word for me if ever the other side you see all right we learned from cranion the cranial skull miser that rats is the password here. Um, so you have to type them in exactly. It's not case sensitive, although they give you all passwords in this game, I believe, in caps. Um, just so you know, it's emphasized that that's what you're supposed to say. Um, and so we go ahead and give it to this blue man who has just an extraordinary amount of space in between his nose and his upper lip. I mean, the mustache on this guy would be insane, but he's happy with that. Now, um, I'm checking my map to see where I'm at, and I've chosen to walk into this alcove. You can see that there's two other options for where I can go, um, but the lizard is waving his hand and saying, there is a secret door here if you just bash through it. We do, and we've got some rats. So, let's see how we take on dueling moose rats now that we're stronger, higher level, better gear with blessings. Um, it is Quiet Riot's turn, and we're looking to put a hole beyond the hole already in the uh, ear of these guys. Um, we've got some nice missing happening, and we need Twinkle. Oh god. Oh, oh, oh! Okay, yes, there it is. There, There's big splashes, big splat. There, it's gone. I don't even know if we got hit more than once there. Um, so, the rats are proving to be much better. This brass naginata on hairy hand is just ripping through these poor bastards. And there's six arrows into a bat. I mean, I don't even know if there's bat meat left after six arrows impale it from, and, and, you know, take it down from the sky, but it's dead. It is dead. It's the last thing it saw were six arrow points. Um, all right, green ooze gurgling away. We're going to dunk our head in like it's a barrel of apples at the carnival and see what happens, all right? Um, I forgot to save it, that's, that's part of the fun. Oh, God. Oh, God. Okay. So, Twinkle is stout. I believe that's going to increase his endurance by five. Um, and that is very, very important for this guy because I think endurance... Um, directly relates to how many hit points you get per level and twinkle was the lightest of everybody in terms of endurance and um so that was perfect i went 
and had him dunk his head in um, because I wasn't sure where I was in the order, and I like to distribute the experience and the blessings evenly if I can. If I'm being really anal, I'll save the game and then see what it is and then see who needs it the most, reload, give it to them, whatever. But I'm kind of going on a, um, you know, shoot from the hip style. Uh, we need to bash through again, and the bat is telling us there are monsters on the other side. You see what I did was I synced up the mouth movement of the rat to my own movements um, and created a seamless lip sync for everyone. All right, we got a bat coming in here, but that's they're a joke um, unless they poison us, which poisoning luckily isn't really that big of a deal unless you get it massively applied um and let's just shoot oh that is the strength of the bow and arrow never underestimate the bow and arrow maximize that i just took down two moose rats from range without them even getting a swing on me because everybody can shoot a bow we've got good strong bows so what we know beyond a shadow of a doubt is that bowery, boweration, is amazing in this. And you can see I'm shooting six arrows, and you have unlimited arrows. That's never a thing you have to worry about, which is uh, quite nice, because I'm lazy and I don't want to manage arrows. All right, so we've got some more barrels. Um, let's reverse back, and again, now Lady Green is stout, and we've got another skull. That's another thousand gold, thousand experience. Things are happening. She's stout, up to 19 endurance, so that means that she's going to have more hit points and be able to just take that guillotine to the head and body area much better. You can see the icon, the fist to the face for hit points. She can now take more punches directly into the face. A, you know, a punch that would crunch and deform the face she can take more of those. That's great. Um, all right, so now I'm I'm feeling pretty good about what's happening, so I am going to save it um, in case disaster strikes. All right, let's dunk it, and we're going in with the fattest of the shadows, and he's stout like never before. That's great. He's a dwarf, so he's already stout, but actually, 20 endurance, he's not the stoutest. His shadow was always stout, but now he is stout. That is, whoa, Rat Overlord is near, turn back or perish. Okay, so if you recall, the clue said head south to find the Rat Overlord. The compass says I'm going south, the lizard says bash this door, and we know because of these nice warnings, um, less cryptic than normal, these are very direct, Rat Overlord is there. Now, I still have a way, a branch off of this that I haven't explored yet. So, I'm going to get these power-ups before I even attempt to tickle the Rat Overlord. Um, the yellow key grants access to the Fortress of Fear. Great. Why not? Okay. Um, yellow key, yellow, yellow writing. Uh, Fortress of Fear. Sounds like a place I'd want to avoid. And that's a very dead bat. We get nothing from that. No gold, no bat parts, just experience, and a story to tell the grandkids. Actually, those are pretty much the same thing. Anyway, um, another barrel. Let's do it. Hey. All right. So the hunkster is now quicker. Oh, I'm sorry. Quiet Riot is now quicker. Um, and the good thing about speeding her up is that I think it affects initiative and ninjas love being quick so we will take that every day of the week all right blue man ass group what you got for me we're going and um are we gonna go through and go to the overlord or are we thinking about oh god that's that's the wrong way that's not what you hope for all right Let's just see what happens. I'm going to save it in case the dragon's mouth comes crunching down. We're going to bash through this wall, um, given that our hit points are pretty reasonable here. All right, here we go. And that's a lot of moose rats, but 
God, our arrows just took down one. We got some big fatty explosions going on here. Uh, just the blood raging from the wounds on this poor moose rat. And let's see if indeed, yes, Lady Green regally taking down the fool. Now, I'm going to strafe to the left here so that if there are monsters, I can blow them away with my arrows and not waste an opportunity. If I were to move over normally and then turn, they could advance a square. Uh, so I want to strafe there just to see if I can get an extra shot off, but there's nothing. Um, nothing but a ladder up. And so what we need to realize here is that the Rat Overlord is not in this cavern. He is above ground in a place within the town. So everything I said about flooding the cavern is going out the window. It would have been a horribly wrong strategy. The Rat Overlord was several steps ahead of me. Not a surprise. Um, I'm incompetent. Um, but it is a rat. But that's speciesist. Um, I, I need to think about the fact that I should estimate my enemies accurately. And flooding this place would have done nothing. So, do I want to go out and just kind of see what's up here? I guess, but I'll save it first. Okay. Alright, so we got a rat coming at us, and here we are in the town in this previously unexplored quadrant. Alright. Oh. So this isn't just a rat. Um, this is the Rat Overlord himself, which is why he was able to hit Lady Green uh, into the red there. So I need to... The, the, the picture is the same. Um, they could have put like a crown on his head or something, but maybe they don't believe in that kind of, um, you know, display of power in, in the Rat World. Either way, um, I need to think about the fact that I am facing the Rat Overlord now and wonder if I should reassess my strategy. Yeah. Um, oh, God. Lady Green is down, and the explosions are much more modest against this guy, um, but let's just keep... He's red. Let's keep going, then. Let's keep going. Let's just keep swinging and see who falls first. We've got an unconscious person. Whoa. That shy. Hey, hey, we did it. Ninjas win again. And, yep, we are eligible for the next level. Um, things are going great. Okay, so, um, she got her experience, and she's seven below zero. I can't remember when you become dead permanently, like when you turn into a tombstone in this game. If it's like D&D &D and, you know, second edition, I think, if you're minus ten, then you are beyond death's door and you actually die, or if it goes deeper than that. Um, either way, she's really hurt, um, and she's down. Uh, but, oh, we've got a treasure box, and I cannot wait for this. Okay, so, this is where the Rat Overlord lives, in this little corner with his treasure. Um, I guess we could all hope to aspire to an abode like this, um, my own little private sanctuary with a treasure box. Now, we need to open this, um and see what kind of loot this dude was sitting on. And when we open it, we need to use our best lockpicking expert, depending on, you know, what we got in terms of the lock. So, I believe, yeah, it's still Fat Shadow with that big old 33. Um, gem set in the corners of the chest, glow with power. Open the lid. Well, by God, we will. We will open the lid. Um, I, I want to know what's in here. I have to. It's it's the ninja prerogative. All right, so... Oh, not a problem. Shadow takes it down on the first pick. Not even hurt. And Morphos is inside somehow. Okay. Um, a gaseous form rises from the chest and hovers in the air before you. I am Morphos, servant of Gaeum and protector of Fountainhead. My wavery spirit voice, it's very bad. It was, um, it just came out, um, as I was channeling Morphos, and I apologize for that. Morphos, I apologize to you. Everyone 
deserves an apology for that. But either way, even though this guy is a gas man, he's been stuck in this box. Um, By releasing me from my prison, you have lifted an enduring curse from this fair town. Accept my reward and heed my advice. Visit the fountain that stands alone. Alright. I am going to have to apologize again, but I couldn't resist. It, it gives it a bit of spice um, to have him talk like a wavering, poor British gas. Um, anyway, he's giving me a reward, which I am very happy about. That's what I'm in this for. You know, it's very secondary to me that Morphos has been released. Um, and, and that's a lot of that's predicated on the fact that he was captured by a rat and he was put into a box, even though he's some kind of spirit that was appointed by um, some higher being. Um, so I feel like he's a failure. Um, but that doesn't mean he doesn't deserve rescue. Okay, so let's see what we got. Okay, hey, hey, oh, oh, okay, hey, hey, oh, all right, so we got 2,500 gold, several items, um, now, I'm not sure how it came across to you, but there is a little, like, reverberating clang or sound effect when you get a magical item in this game, and I believe that the volume and intensity of that reverberation reflects the strength of the item. So some of those were really loud pings, and I feel like that means we got some good stuff. So let's see what we got. We've got four skulls. Tremendous. 4,000 experience and gold. We got a leather flame burge. So we got a limp flame burge. Great. Um, and no Viagra. Okay, and we got an orb of sleeping, which is a joke, um, but we did get a fiery wooden quick short bow. Oh, silver scimitar, that is a good prefix on a weapon we can't use, but this crystal longbow? Wow. Alright, crystal is an excellent prefix, longbow is strictly better than the short bow, so as long as ninjas can use it, oh, and we got an iron belt, which is fine. Um, as long as ninjas can use that bow, we have massively upgraded our range game, which is basically, at least for me in this game, um, 90% of my battle prowess. Alright, so let's then... They were kind enough to give us a rope and hook so we can get back in and out of this place. Um, so let's enter the caverns. And we can just strut through at this point. Like, we have cleared this baby out, everyone's dead, murder, murder, everywhere, um, there is an unexplored section, so I might want to kind of try to figure that out at some point, but, um, for now, oh, yep, and it's not case sensitive, you can just type whatever you want, here we go, all lowercase, um, and, okay, now we've got to get through these, Guillotines. And I think they're still, yeah, they're still hitting Lady Green, even though she's unconscious. There's no slipping through them. Um, it's like student loan debt, you know. Um, you can't relieve it through medical injury. It, it just death. Um, okay, whoa, she's 15 under. So whatever it is that puts you to dead, um, we're going to test those limits here. I'd really rather she didn't die uh, because it's much more expensive to remedy... Uh, a death than it is uh, an unconscious person, but um, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna try it, and we're out, and we got two unconscious people, a good bit of money, a bunch of gear, and we're ready for the next level. Now, one thing I want to say is we remember that Morphos said to visit the fountain that stands alone, and we will do that, um, in due time, because I believe it gives you a, a pretty good reward if you've got the cash, um, the fountain that stands alone is down this corridor here, uh, past the spell guild, and kind of before you get to the room, they previously held a bunch of bubble men and moose rats 
um, that leads to Cranion. Yeah, there it is right there. So this is the fountain that stands alone. Um, and so if you want to go to this, you can. And I believe that if my memory serves, what happens is you can throw in money, and based on how much money you throw in, you get that much experience for that person. So if you're really rich, you can get a bunch of experience, um, but I'm not quite that rich, although I am going to go to the Skull Miser here and just miser my way into a bunch of experience and a bunch of gold. Uh, that seems like the thing to do. You know, whoever designed the artwork on these doors must be rolling in it because they got a commission to do all the doors in the town. All right, Cranion. More lovely skulls. Yep, that's right, buddy. Lovely is the way to describe these skulls. The key language. Oh my. Whoa. All right, so we have way more experience than I thought. I don't know if that all came from the Overlord or if it was just from Morphos freeing him from the chest. Either way, we are about to blow up the watermelons. All right, so... Alright, we, we got up to level 7 here, um, let's look at this, train, train, tremendous, tremendous, oh, okay. Alright, well I was hoping for the free heal, um, for the unconscious people, but that's a little bit, you know, too ambitious on my part, too cheap. Uh, I, I was trained by the Skull Miser, so I was hoping to be the experienced miser, that's not a thing that you can do. Um, I need to... Go to Temple Greenleaf, smoke some Greenleaf, and get these people back up and green. All right. Green, green, green. We are good. Um, God, what is that green, green? Um, that's what uh, Ruby Rod says in Fifth Element. It's always saying everything's green. All right. Um, which, right, the guy in the pot can, you know, speak to that lifestyle. All right, so let's bust open some watermelons with the fat shadow and the lady green. Whoa, did I drop that green? We got lady green breaking green watermelons with green health, fresh from temple green leaf. Um, everything is happening. I think if we ever get like ninja garb, um, I was thinking it should be white because we're good, but maybe it should be green. Um, you know, to reflect our love of money um, and experience Temple Greenleaf, just all things green. All right, so let's, um, you know, just bask in the glory of us being much more powerful. All right, so we've still got about 7,800 gold, and look at these hit points. All right. Um, Twink Daddy is north of 50. So that's really encouraging. Everybody else is real fat. And um, we, uh, Twink Daddy started at six. So again, we've made massive progress in just um, six levels here. So let's just keep this going. Now, let me talk to the, st the fountain that stands alone. An effervescent voice gurgles from the water. Give freely of your wealth of gold if greater experience be your goal. Will you drop gold in my fountain bowl? All right, so yeah, um, it is what I thought. Like, you can just drop in money, and let's test it out. Um, I'm going to do this with my man in the front, um, Harry Hand, and I'm going to give a 1,000 just so I can... Yep, okay. So, it is one for one in terms of the gold to experience ratio. I can't help but think that that effervescent voice has got to be Morphos just sitting below the fountain um, or inside it, you know, talking out uh, and asking for donations and just raking in the gold again. Um, whatever. All right, so sparkling waters flow through the fountain of Moonbeam, fabled nymph of the enchanted meadow. Toss in a coin. All right, so that's who that is. Uh, Moonbeam, the fabled nymph, and... Take the Twisting Horn of Gold to the Central Meadow. Find the unique Steed of Old and relieve its dying sorrow. Alright. So these... That's right. These 
fountains, speaking riddles, poetry, um, and for one gold you get a poem, and you get a different poem every time. Uh, Seek the sister of the waters blue near the southwest corner true. Right, and these all kind of like provide context for clues to quests that you can undergo throughout your adventure. This is, you know, truly a I'm not going to hold your hand uh, open world game with very little uh, direction. They just plop you in here and, you know, the game kind of guides you based on how hard the enemies are. Uh, and so you just kind of learn the hard way if you shouldn't go someplace or you should. Um, all right. Let's talk to Fen before he uses the axe and see what we've got. All right, so um, let's go ahead and identify some of our stuff. Let's see what this bow is all about. Yeah, all right. That is a shame. I mean, so many prefixes and I forgot because of the prefix wooden, although wood seems to be a standard thing to make bows out of, in this game, wooden is just always already a terrible prefix. It's like leather or bronze or brass, and it basically means it's going to be worse than if it had no prefix at all. And so, although we rolled this awesome bow, it being wooden gives us a minus three to hit, takes the damage down to zero to three and it gives us like fire resistance but who gives a crap oh man that is that is unfortunate um okay so the orb of sleeping all that does is put people to sleep which we're a party of murderers so not necessarily something we want to do but sell this limp weapon and um i'm gonna see just what a regular short bow is all about yeah it's double the damage of this fiery wooden quick short bow. Okay, so that's crap. Um, so we can do double the damage without a minus to hit. I think we'll do that. Um, it's worth plus two speed and plus seven fire resistance at this point. Let's get rid of this stuff and let's just pray something else that we got is good. All right, so let's go ahead and identify this crystal longbow. Oh, thank God. Okay, so this can be used by a ninja, and look at this. In terms of how much superior it is to the short bow, it gives me plus one to hit, and it does, it starts, its base damage is the max of the short bow, and then it almost doubles it. So that is something really exciting to see. And again, just reminding myself of what I can't do, which is a scimitar. So let's sell the scimitar. Um, let's just check out this iron belt, see what we've got going on here, and everyone can use it, and it's plus one armor. So that's not the best, but it's really good. Um, there's, again, there's no paper doll. Oh, my armor's broken. Um, let's fix that. Okay. Uh, so getting knocked unconscious also breaks it. It's not just dying. Let me clean up some stuff. We don't need this cudgel. Um, we sure as hell don't need these bronze boots. Uh... Anything else? Um, do you have anything good to sell? Wow, nice. Limp nunchucks. Real good. Um, yep, bronze plate mail. Can't equip it, and it's probably bad anyway, even though it's expensive. Um, you got anything in the misc section here, amigo? Because... Alright, well, you have leather robes, which I've got plenty of those. I'll take a torch. I have to have it. Might as well stock up on rope and hooks. Um, I'm going to pick up an extra. All right. So I got my hat. And let's go ahead and see what needs to be done in the world of my people and their stats. Let's just kind of take a look through this. Let's look at my man. All right, let's start distributing things. Okay, so um, she's got the longbow. Now, surprisingly, Twinkle, as I was just looking, is the most accurate of my members, and he has the worst armor class. Um, so I should give him the belt. I just get him into the double digits. And then I'm going to take off his short bow, and I'm going to just give him some new stuff. New belt, look at that belt icon, and a new bow. 
And what I'm going to do is now just kind of give him back his own stuff so I can cycle up the equipment that is I'm using so I can see it all at a glance instead of having to move around through, kind of keep things tidy. Um, and now I've got a really, really happy twinkle with a nice bow. All right. So let's think about our next course of action. We could go outside. Um, we could try to completely map out the town. I think that's actually a pretty good idea. Looking at my map, they tend to use just about every area. So what is up here? What is this area? Oh, okay. Yeah, I know what that is. It's the storeroom. I somehow never went into that again after I got killed uh, before. And it, you know, once bitten, twice shy, right? So that makes sense. Um, okay, so let's just go in. This is actually still going to be a challenge. I don't have any blessings. Um, all right, let's just swing it. Let's swing. Man, three moose rats. Okay, all right. I'm feeling pretty reasonable. Yeah, this is this is no problem. Let's just keep swinging. Bake the blood all over them, and we got it. All right, so finally... Oh, psh, and we were hardly hurt. Look at Hidden Hunk. I mean, just hiding and being handsome, taking no damage, doing his thing. All right, let's open up a chest, shall we? Do it, Shadow. Make it happen. Oh! Okay, we got a bunch of gold in the amulet. I just thought of something. How have I not made the connection that Fat Shadow is kind of like Shadow Stevens from Hollywood Squares? God, that's... That is tremendous. All right, so that is mapping out that corner. Now, I do want to indicate that... Um, I can map out the rest of this town pretty easily. The game d does a good job of almost using every tile um, in the 20 by 20 grid. So one kind of thing to look for if you're trying to find secrets is just any open area where you couldn't get to. Either you can teleport to it um, or find a secret passage. Now, you'll see that the upper and the left edge, because of this perspective, always show the wall on the map so over here where i'm dragging the mouse you can see that the left edge is not visible that means that those are open squares that i can walk to and clear out the fog of war um and so i can go map out that area that area is the large uh open expanse right before temple greenleaf and it has some fountains and things so i can go do that and i'm actually really anal about that kind of stuff in this game. I like to map out every square possible just to get to completion because there are so many secrets in this game and you want to be sure that you're getting them um, because they're all very impactful. Uh, and you want to make the game as easy as possible on yourself unless you're, you know, masochistic and that's cool. And you, you do you. Um, I'm going to do me, which is uh, easy and lazy. So let's just slip over, uh, to that area and go ahead and try to map out some more of the town of the good old Fountainhead. Now this area I've actually been to before, um, with the presentation of one past ten, two shall be forever vanquished, their strongholds felled, and kingdoms barren, your title of champion is established. All right. Um, so, I'm pretty sure the that is a reference to the fact that, like, you can get the, oh, Orbs of Power or Ultimate Artifacts, or I can't remember what the exact name is, but you can give them to either the king on the good side or the evil side, and they give you a blessing based on, um, I don't know if they're different, um, but once you've given either side 10 more than the other has, then they kind of win the battle, and the other side's like castle gets exploded and they disappear. Um, so, based on your own feelings, you can play both sides if you want to make sure that they're there, um, but I'm pretty sure that even if you win, the other side will give you stuff for bringing the things in. All right, so now I've mapped this area out by um, the bank. I had been there before, but not when I had my 
kind of like map making my cartography skill. And so now that I've got cartography, I can clear this out. All right. So if I'm ever stuck on what to do or want some explanation, I can come back here for some really crappy clues uh, to things and talk to these fountains. But for now, um, I'm just, you know, content to look at the fact that I believe um, at this point I've explored everything. Now, I do want to say um, if you are feeling raucous and you want to cheat, um, you can, like, Google or remember passwords to towns and portals later in the game. And so you could, like, go into this and, and type something and go to the last town of the game and, and buy some stuff um, that you have no business having access to if you have the money. Um, but I'm not really interested in doing that for this particular playthrough. It's something you can think about if you want to front load your adventure and just be totally overpowered. Um, but I'm going to skip it at this point and just kind of feel the natural progression um, of doing things the right way. Because good ninjas do things the right way. They hide in the shadows the right way. They murder the right way. All right, um, I'm rested up and... Um, let me just finish mapping these tiles so that I can tell everyone that I've done it. And I'm out of here. I'm going to take a look outside uh, for the first time. And what do I see? A blue sky, green grass, and goblins. Alright, so um, it's time to blast these bucktooth bastards into oblivion with our six arrows. No, they're shooting back. Um, but we win. Whoa, what was that explosion? There was nobody else there. What? It's this guy. All right, so I was getting flanked there. Um, okay, so let's just... Man, these guys had a real surprise party. Um, but on the whole, the goblins are so easy that if you were finding the beginning town with the moose rats to be a little bit too challenging um the, you know the difficulty curve with those guys is rough but the goblins you might want to just step outside and bash them in to get some experience and you will be really happy now um oh okay let me just yeah okay i mean yeah you see these guys just um it, my weapons are like a you know hot knife through earth balance. Everything is working out. Um, Alright. So, I want to say something about this terrain. You hear that, like, bump sound. I can't walk on this yet. I need some kind of skill to get through this pathfinding or something. I can't remember what it's called. Um, and I also can't walk on these mountains. So there are certain terrain squares that, until you get the appropriate skill, you cannot go on them. But I can walk on grass. I've mastered that. So let's go over here and see what's happening. We've got a little gap in the mountain range. Um, and so uh, we see here a nice wagon just chilling. Uh, do we want to go this way and go towards the ocean? Or do I want to check out the wagon? You know, I feel like that wagon is pretty tempting. What's going on here? Um, I love the scale of things. I mean, this wagon, it seems appropriate, but it's also as tall as a mountain. Anyway, a rain-streaked pilgrim's wagon barely stands on its four wheels. Search inside? Well, you know I'm going to search inside. And, hey... It's a stereotypical gypsy nomad person, Sophina the Seeress, uh, living in a wagon. I'm Sophina, pupil of the mystic guy. Um, a rogue ninja must face the wrath of the Swamp Town clan. Yikes, okay, so that's a pretty vague fortune that she's giving me. There is a town um, that's just full of ninjas, I think, and so I must be considered a rogue ninja. Um... I'm a rogue rogue ninja, uh, and I'm a good guy, and that's helpful, you know, to look out for that, I guess, give me a little context for my class, 
Um, but really, the reason you go here is for 10 gold, she casts Wizard Eye on you. And so what Wizard Eye does is, in the upper right corner of the screen where it says Might and Magic, um, it's going to display a small section of the map fully, even if I haven't mapped it before. And that is 100% worth that 10 gold. It's an easy spell to cast, but I have no spell casters, so for me, this is fantastic. I like the straw that she's put there on the top of her wagon. It's... I guess it's keeping it warm. Um, you know, fine. But now let's take a look at the map. So we get this little cutout, and it's showing us wagons, trees, mountains, grass, uh, some bare earth and water. Uh, there's the town, and hey, here's another wagon. Um, so I can walk through these trees just fine, no problem. Let's see what's in this pilgrim's wagon. Um, friends, allow me to share with you my special creation, which is a magical elixir that is guaranteed to give you strength. Um, so it's a hundred gold. That's kind of expensive, but I'll try this out. Um, I believe it's just a temporary buff, but that kind of thing can be really useful if you can't bash through a door. Um, you can just strength up your people in the front, and then you might be able to pass the check that's required to get through a door, or you just do a lot more damage. All right, so we've got this road to walk on. We've got a wagon there and there. Um, a fountainhead. And back down here, this is a, like a dungeon, I think. And so, oh. Oh, yes, yes, I forgot about these guys. These are orcs. And so, orcs, um, you can kind of see from far away, have this exposed, undulating midriff that is something else. It is out of this world. It's the most seductive, um pixel graphic card I've ever seen. And so let's just blast these guys and see what happens if they get a little bit closer. Um, all right, so you can see the belly better. The sun is glistening off of it. All right, so we've got a smiley goblin, a blinky orc, a chomping bat, and... It's my turn to just kind of fire away at these fools and really ask this orc the question, why is there a hole in his garment where his belly should be? Oh, I'm not going to get to ask that. Oh, maybe this guy. No. Okay. Um, all right. So let's just take a stroll through this really tall grass and get to this um, pilgrim's wagon. The floor of the wagon is littered with bones and filthy stoneware, and the benches look to be set up as makeshift bunks. In one corner is a set of dented goblin's armor, set the wagon aflame. Alright, so, um, this is like a goblin spawner, a goblin base, um, and, uh, in a really, really kind of horrible fashion, I'm gonna burn it. Um, ashes and glowing embers rise into the air, floating on the waves of heat radiating from the burning wagon. Whoa, 2,500 experience. And, and treasure? 2,000 gold gauntlets chainmail? Eh. Eh. Hey. Look at that. Man, it pays to kill goblins. My goodness. Alright, I'm gonna do that all day long. Let's look for these wagons. You know, notice they didn't give me the option to burn down the wagon um, with the potion cellar. Uh, and I probably wouldn't have taken it because I'm good, but I I might have hovered over that, that yes button for a bit. Now, um, this is water, and I can walk on this because I got everybody the swimming skill. Uh, Green moss clings to the small stone wall. Drink from the well, by God, I will drink from the well. Now, um, as you can see, this little island, your skin has been magically toughened. Oh, okay. And now um, everybody's health indicator has gone to gray instead of uh, green. And you can see 
Sweet Moses, my health is doubled for everybody. So I, because I got the swimming skill, I was able to come to this island, drink from the well for free, and double my health. Um, so this is going to help me really take care of stuff in the immediate vicinity around Fountainhead. Alright, now I'm looking around, the bat's moving his mouth, and here is the dungeon uh, that we can see kind of by map and that we noticed earlier. Um, so, there's trouble. Let's take a look at it. Horrid carvings in the wooden floor mark the entrance to a dark temple. Enter. Well, um, we're good. We're purging the land of evil. I really want to enter this place. Um, I'm not going to do it just yet. I'm going to kind of map out a little bit more around the town before I do so. Um, because there could just be more wagons to burn and experience to gain. And I'm all about just piling up free loot, experience and stuff before I actually do the pesky business of entering dark and foreboding temples. Alright, so let's just kind of take a look. Oh, goblin's popping out. Have a volley of arrows, my good men, and you're dead. I've taken your lunch money, and I'm happy. Oh, here's an orc. Belly moving. He's coming, eyes blinking. Belly pulsating. What's our next move? You beautiful specimen. My god. They've done a number on this guy. Alright. So, although I do like to look at you, your kind can't be wandering around. I've got to shoot you. Um, this Sometimes the job is, you know, quite painful. It's going to be gonna be hard to sleep tonight after that, but, um, you do have to put your personal feelings aside. Okay, there's some more fun down there. Let's see what we can do. Okay, yep, and we've just passed time at the space bar. Let that guy walk into our fire line and just... Oh, there's a guy. Okay. And so... Um... Hey! Okay. There we go. Now, um... I want to kind of explain what I did there. I've played this game once or twice. Um... And so I know how to really exploit the environment to allow myself to shoot as much as possible because, um... I find it to be so powerful. So what I did was, I let this guy path into my bowline. I knew that he was going to step over into one of these tiles um, that I can't see through the trees. But I knew he would go there, and so I fired anyway, um, and it hit him on that tile. And so you can do those kind of things to just um, help yourself out. As long as you can see them in the distance at the smallest uh, frame rate or whatever picture size, then you can shoot them and finally have a close-up look at one of these guys and let's just let's just take some time with this. Um, the muses were whispering in the artist's ears when he or she painted this and you know I'm looking at the Orc Warrior, I'm thinking to myself, this belly is exposed and is undulating. For what reason? Um, to show me that he's hungry? To show me pure beauty? To show me um, that he's looking for a partner uh, in, in these turbulent times? The hand on the hip is just amazing. It's like... He's looking at me like, what are you looking at? Yes, I'm wearing a shawl, um, and my midriff is exposed. And yes, it is picture perfect. Um, maple syrup? Why, yes, that is what I just rubbed all over it. 
I like the color combo he's got. Very autumnal look, you know. Um, kind of, kind of bringing out the, the inner scarecrow there a bit. Um, you know, I bet he's got a cornucopia and some squash. But back at the old homestead, this spear that he's got doesn't even look that threatening. It's just like kind of like a walking stick. He doesn't he doesn't look poised for attack. He he looks more content to just gaze at us, but that's enough of that. Let's see how much blood we can explode out of your belly. Alright, another well. One thing I do want to say is you can see on the wizard eye that this well does not appear. Um, so it doesn't reveal everything. You kinda have to you know, keep your eyes peeled. Alright, let's drink from this one, because the other one was so good. Is this one gonna kill me? No. Your defensive skill has been magically augmented. What does that mean? Well, that means we've got a gray boosted AC stat, and it looks like it's about plus 20. So, by going out here and drinking from wells, I've doubled my hit points and over doubled my armor. Um, I am a killing machine. A team of ninja death. Um, okay, so I can peek through the trees and see their cute little feet. Um, and I'm going to shoot at those feet and try to make blood explosions. I did. They're dead. Now there's a wagon here. Is this their house? Let's check it out. Um, nobody's sneaking up on me. Going in. Okay, you've stumbled upon an orc outpost. There are maps and plans written in indecipherable scratches on dried hides. Destroy everything? Well, I probably will, but I do want to just take a moment to observe that even though these are seemingly primitive and warlike beings, they have red velvet curtains in the entryway here with gold sashes tying them back. So, when the bloodlust is simmered down, they they do really have a sense of decorum. Now, I guess they are blood-red drapes, and, well, let me, let me walk this back. They probably killed somebody to get this wagon. This probably was some other gypsy's home. And the dried hide that their map is on might just be human skin. Uh, and knowing that, I can't let this wagon exist. I've, I've got to, for the good of whatever, you know, traveling folk once lived here, it's got to go. Splinters and wood chips fly as you hack the wagon and its contents to oblivion. Huh. So I burned the other one, but this one, I just hack with my swords and axes. Man, it seems like a really bad exercise for the maintenance of my weapons, but, um, man, there's a, there's a real primal rage associated with just hacking it to bits as opposed to simply burning it. I wonder why we choose one over the other. Um, maybe just the sight of human skin being used for something like this is so abhorrent that I have to hack back. The orcs will be forced to leave the area when they find their outpost destroyed, and order will once again return to the Hidden Valley. 5,000 experience. That's amazing. Wait a minute. The Hidden Valley. Hidden Valley Ranch. This is where the dressing comes from. This area around Fountainhead must be the central hub for the universe's supply of Hidden Valley Ranch. So, eliminating these orcs has actually opened up the supply chain, freed up the distribution networks that give us all the Hidden Valley Ranch. I can only assume that at least 95% of us who are watching this video um, are either eating Hidden Valley Ranch or 
in a vat of it right now. Man, and we get 5,000 gold, jewel, ring, short bow. Yeah. A bunch of stuff that ninjas can equip. This is great. Not only do we have all the dressing we need, we've got experience. And so, um, I'm quite pleased. I'm going to save the old game. Uh, oh, and so day has passed. Wizard Eye spell has worn off, and here we go. Um, an orc warrior. This guy kind of snuck up on me, preventing me from getting a bunch of my arrows in. Uh, ooh. Pike. I'll take a pike. Sure. Um, I want to take a quick moment and look at the map, and you see that the map has shifted, and now we're on section A2. Um, so when you're out in the world map, it's much bigger than a 20 by 20 grid. And so what they kind of do is slowly load in certain areas. So you'll reach a threshold and it'll say like, please wait or whatever. And that's how you know that you've entered a new section and the map just kind of shifts down. Now, I don't really want to do much A2 work at the moment. I'm interested in patrolling the fountainhead area. Now I'm back in good old A1. And I just want to walk around on as many tiles as I can and map it out so that I can accomplish my real goal, which has been revealed to me as securing the Hidden Valley Ranch Empire. Um, and I'm willing to die for that. That, that cause has animated me more than, you know... Sheltum and anybody else. Um, so I'm going to go back into town here and we can train up. We've gotten enough experience to just punch up to the next level. We're going to lose these buffs and it's 360. So it really does seem to increase by 90 each time. I don't know if it's going to just take off even more than that. Um, but as you can see, that's going to start to add up. Um, so, I'm going to lose all these buffs, but I need to train, see where we're at, and um, I can just get those buffs again. Now, one thing to consider is that I can drink the water from both wells and donate. All right. So let's train everybody up at, at the uh, Temple Greenleaf and get my herb on. And I will be super buffed. And I'm going to have to do that if the temple proves to be too difficult. Like if I can't get enough gear. All right. Look at this. Everybody's lucky number seven. And we almost have a person at 100 hit points. Everybody's above 10 armor class or at 10. Things are really, really looking promising. Twinkle's smile has never felt so sincere, and rest assured that my face looks exactly like his face right now. Um, I don't think... Let's see. Does our... Yes. Okay, so our thieving has gone up to 39, so that skill at least seems to scale with level, but stats themselves don't appear to be like randomly increasing or bumping up even by a small interval as I level. It's just hit points um, and skills, but that's fine. That's that's totally fine. Hit points is pretty much gold here. It's how many punches in the face we can take. All right, so we're good on now, maybe our resistances go up as well. We've got 15,000 gold. So, I think it's time to just look at some of the loot that we got. Wooden amulet, freaking fantastic. That's trash. Leather ringmail, hilariously trash. Crystal gauntlets, those could be quite good. That's fantastic. We can wear those and they're good. Leather gauntlets, great. I've already got that. Crystal chainmail, that would be really desirable, but ninjas, I'm assuming, can't wear that. Uh, wooden boots, really bad. Lapis bardiche, man, can we use that? Because that would be super strong. Another glass cloak, 
a jewel of sparkling. Well, maybe it sells for a lot. God, sparkling. That might be a spell, but I don't know if it's like color spray or something. It blinds people. That's just abysmal. Um, man, I hope we get better than that. A leather ring. How charming. A wooden short bow. Ah, and a bronze pike. Oh, that sucks. Well, we've got a bunch of stuff to sell anyway. Um, so let's think about heading over to Fens um, and making magic happen by selling our stuff. But I think that before we do this, I, th I feel like this is a pretty good stopping point for us to just go ahead and stop and then bounce in here, sell a bunch of stuff, identify, see if we got anything that's worthwhile, get some torches, and start our fantastic foray into the temple. So I'm going to say so long, everybody. Um, please leave comments below if you have anything nice or evil to say. Um, like and subscribe to this video. It's very much appreciated. Thank you so much for watching. I will catch you next time. Bye, Akan. Namaste.